Welcome to Mayo Medical Laboratory's Hot Topics. These presentations provide a short discussion of current topics and may be helpful to you in your practice. Today our topic is a discussion on the clinical utility of identifying fusion transcripts to accurately classify and treat salivary gland malignancies. Our speaker for this program is Dr. Joaquin Garcia, a consultant in the Division of Anatomic Pathology at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Dr. Garcia is also the Vice Chair of Laboratories and Medical Director of the Histology Laboratory. Dr. Garcia, thank you for presenting with us today. Thank you for the kind introduction. Salivary gland neoplasia is often considered one of the more challenging areas of diagnostic surgical pathology. Given the overall rarity of salivary gland tumors, most surgical pathologists encounter them infrequently in practice. Naturally, this creates a risk for misclassification and inappropriate treatment. This hot topic discusses four malignancies of salivary gland origin characterized by recurrent fusion gene events, mucoepidermic carcinoma, mammary analog secretary carcinoma of salivary glands, adenoid cystic carcinoma, and hyaluronizing clear cell carcinoma. We will emphasize the clinical utility of identifying fusion transcripts and salivary gland malignancies to aid in accurate classification. I have no disclosures. As you view this presentation, consider the following important points regarding fusion transcripts that characterize malignancies of salivary gland origin. How is the testing going to be used in your practice? When should the test be used? How will results impact patient management? Challenges in salivary gland pathology are rooted in the dramatic histomorphologic overlap within and between benign and malignant tumors. Although our understanding of the morphologic and immunophenotypic nuances of salivary gland neoplasia has improved over the years, even expert head and neck pathologists continue to struggle with a subset of cases using conventional surgical pathology techniques, that is, histomorphology, histochemistry, and immunistic chemistry. This series of micrographs highlights the inherent difficulty in distinguishing high-grade glandular salivary malignancies from one another. Adenosquamous carcinoma on the left, salivary duct carcinoma in the middle, and mucopidermic carcinoma in the right. The overall rarity and histomorphologic overlap between salivary gland tumors makes classification difficult, so cytogenetic and or molecular testing are occasionally indicated. The identification of unique molecular signatures in malignancy, such as fusion oncogenes, provides tremendous diagnostic, prognostic, and predictive value in the world of oncology. Historically, the menu of known fusion oncogenes was primarily composed of sarcomas and hematologic tumors. For a significant period of time, it was thought that fusion transcripts were unusual in epithelial malignancies as they often exhibit complex karyotypes and recurrent identifiable chromosomal arrangements are not readily appreciated. Nevertheless, an increasing number of epithelial malignancies are associated with recurrent chromosomal rearrangements. This trend will likely continue as next generation sequencing platforms are applied to explore the genetic profile of epithelial malignancies in both research and clinical domains. Our understanding of salivary gland pathogenesis was historically based on morphologic and immunophenotypic observations rather than the molecular events that precede them. In recent decades, we have seen the unveiling of disease-defining fusion transcripts that encode novel oncoproteins or ectopically expressed normal or truncated oncoproteins in several salivary gland tumors. These fusion oncogenes typically encode transcriptional coactivators, transcription factors, and tyrosine kinases. Several epithelial malignancies of salivary gland origin frequently harbor fusion transcripts. Mucoepidermic carcinoma, mammary analog secretary carcinoma of salivary glands, adenoid cystic carcinoma, and hyaluronizing clear cell carcinoma. Although fusion genes have inspired targeted therapy in other oncologic settings, this is currently not the case in salivary gland oncology. At present, the clinical utility of identifying fusion transcripts in these tumors is restricted to diagnosis. Mucoepidermic carcinoma is characterized by the recurrent translocation 1119, which has not been observed in other neoplasms. The resulting fusion transcript, CRTC1 mammal 2, is composed of exon 1 of CRTC1 and exons 2 to 5 of mammal 2, both of which are transcriptional coactivators. CRTC1 belongs to the family of Krebb coactivators. Mammal 2 belongs to the master myelin like family of nuclear proteins and serves as a coactivator of NOTCH receptors. The resulting fusion transcript encodes a chimeric protein containing the Krebb binding coiled coil domain of CRTC1 
and the transactivation domain of the mammal too. Eukoepidermo carcinoma is the most common malignant salivary gland tumor in both pediatric and adult populations. Although mucoepidermal carcinoma is typically observed in the major salivary glands, it is occasionally seen in minor salivary gland sites as well. The classic cellular constituents of mucoepidermal carcinoma are mucus, epidermoid, and intermediate cells. The proportion of each cell type varies widely, and several morphologic variants exist as well, such as oncocytic, sclerosing, cystic, and clear cell mucoepidermal carcinoma. Differential diagnostic considerations for mucoepidermal carcinoma range from benign to malignant lesions, necrotizing seattle metaplasia, inverted ductal papilloma, cystadenoma, lymphopathial cysts, oncocytoma, adenosquamous carcinoma, and salivary duct carcinoma. This image shows disruption of the mammal 2 gene in the case of mucoepidermal carcinoma. Intact mammal 2 genes are represented by red and green signals that are immediately adjacent to one another, occasionally appearing as yellow or fused signals. Disrupted mammal 2 genes are represented by red and green signals that are significantly separated from one another. Mammary analog secretary carcinoma of salivary glands is characterized by the same translocation seen in secretary carcinoma of the breast, that is, 1215. The resulting fusion transcript ETV6 and TRAC3 encodes a chimeric tyrosine kinase that has the potential to activate two major cellular pathways RAS MAP kinase mitogenic pathway and phosphatidyl inositol 3 kinase AKT pathway. Interestingly, the fusion transcript observed in mammary analog secretary carcinoma and secretary carcinoma of the breast is also seen in congenital or infantile fibrosarcoma, congenital mesoblastic nephroma, and in rare cases of acute myeloid leukemia. Mammary analog secretary carcinoma of salivary glands is a recently described entity that shows morphologic, immunophenotypic, and molecular overlap with secretary carcinoma of the breast. Prior to the characterization of mammary analog secretary carcinoma by Skolova et al. in 2010, these cases were commonly misclassified as a cynic cell carcinoma, cyst adenocarcinoma, and adenocarcinoma not otherwise specified. In 2010, Skolova et al. described mammary analog secretary carcinoma as a relatively low-grade salivary gland malignancy that predominantly involves major salivary glands, primarily the parotid gland. Mammary analog secretary carcinoma of salivary glands is typically a well-circumscribed and libelated mass dissected by bands of fibrosis. Tumor cells coalesce within an intricate network of cystic and microcystic spaces. Cystic spaces characteristically contain homogeneous or vacuolated pink material. Tumor cell nuclei are vesicular with finely granular chromatin and occasional centrally located nucleoli. Mammary analog secretary carcinoma exhibits a relatively consistent immunophenotype with strong and diffuse expression for S100 and mammoglobin. However, these features are not specific to mammary analog secretary carcinoma. This image shows disruption of the ETV6 gene in a case of mammary analog secretary carcinoma of salivary glands. Intact EV6 genes are represented by red and green signals that are immediately adjacent to one another, occasionally appearing as yellow or fused signals. Disrupted ETV6 genes are represented by red and green signals that are significantly separated from one another. A significant percentage of adenoid cystic carcinoma cases harbor a recurrent translocation, 6-9, that fuses the MIB oncogene with the NFib transcription factor gene, most commonly MIB exon 14 fused to NFib exons 8C or 9. MIB is a transcriptional regulator for cell proliferation, apoptosis, and differentiation. MIB activation has been observed in adenoid cystic carcinoma even in the absence of the MIB NFib fusion transcript implying that MIB appears to be the key oncoprotein and other molecular pathways impacting its expression likely exist. The reported prevalence of MIB rearrangement in cases of adenoid cystic carcinoma has ranged from 28 to 86 percent. Importantly, the MIB and NFib fusion transcript has not been reported in malignancies of the head and neck other than adenoid cystic carcinoma. Adenoid cystic carcinoma is infrequently encountered in surgical pathology, however, it is often given diagnostic consideration because of its histomorphological overlap with other salivary gland neoplasms and peculiar clinical course. Adenoid cystic carcinoma is notorious for its insidious growth, 
the exception being cases with higher transformation, yet almost invariably lethal clinical course. Adenoid cystic carcinoma is observed in both major and minor salivary glands of the head and neck, and has also been reported in virtually every anatomic subsite, skin, lung, breast, and vulva, to name a few. Adenoid cystic carcinoma is a biphasic salivary gland neoplasm composed of ductal and myopathial subpopulations that classically shows tubular, cribriform, and or solid architectural patterns. Not uncommonly, the myopathial cell component secretes a basement membrane-like material that can be seen within glandular lumina, enveloping tumor cell nests, or embedded in stroma. Although this is occasionally a useful diagnostic clue, a similar extracellular matrix can be produced by other biphasic salivary gland neoplasms as well. This image shows disruption of the MIB gene in a case of adenoid cystic carcinoma. Intact MIB genes are represented by red and green signals that are immediately adjacent to one another, occasionally appearing as yellow or fused signals. Disrupted MIB genes are represented by red and green signals that are significantly separated from one another. Hyalinizing clear cell carcinoma is characterized by a translocation, 1222, that results in a fusion transcript EDWSR1 ATF1 in over 80% of cases. EWSR1 belongs to the TET family of transcription factors, and ATF1 encodes a cyclic AMP-dependent transcription factor. Similar to the promiscuous fusion gene in mammary analog secretary carcinoma, the fusion gene EWSR1 ATF1 has been noted in several other malignancies. Clear cell sarcoma of tendons and aponeuroses, angiomatoid fibrous histiocytoma, and clear cell sarcoma of the gastrointestinal tract. Hyalinizing clear cell carcinoma is one of the more diagnostically challenging entities encountered in head and neck pathology. The inconsistent classification of this problematic entity over recent decades has made it difficult to characterize its histomorphologic, immunophenotypic, and clinical profile. In retrospect, hyalinizing clear cell carcinoma was frequently misclassified as mucoepidermoid carcinoma, myopathial carcinoma, polymorphous low-grade adenocarcinoma, and adenocarcinoma not otherwise specified. The discovery of a disease-defining fusion transcript in hyalinizing clear cell carcinoma by Anton Escu et al. in 2011 brought clarity to the matter. Hyalinizing clear cell carcinoma is a rare, infiltrative, low-grade, monophasic salivary gland neoplasm. Tumor cells are frequently arranged in sheets, trabeculae, cords, and nests set within a markedly hyalinized background. Tumor cells often demonstrate clear to eosinophilic cytoplasm. True glandular elements and chondroid mixture stroma are not features of hyalinizing clear cell carcinoma. A fundamental feature of hyalinizing clear cell carcinoma is its lack of immunoreactivity for myopathial markers such as S100, SMA, Desmond, and Calponin, although focal staining has been reported infrequently. This image shows disruption of the EWS gene in a case of hyalinizing clear cell carcinoma. Intact EWS genes are represented by the red and green signals that are immediately adjacent to one another occasionally appearing as yellow or fused signals. Disrupted EWS genes are represented by red and green signals that are significantly separated from one another. The discovery of molecular signatures and epithelial malignancies has reformatted the landscape of oncology. These discoveries have not uncommonly led to dramatic advances in diagnostic, prognostic, and predictive testing. Accordingly, surgical pathologists have become increasingly important to the practice of oncologic patient care. Salivary gland neoplasms are notoriously challenging to diagnose and treat, which makes the incorporation of cytogenetic and molecular classification paramount in a subset of cases. Although the clinical utility of fusion gene identification in salivary gland oncology is primarily restricted to diagnosis currently, prognostication and prediction of targeted therapy response will likely play a role in the future. Thank you for your time.